Let's do some attribute joins using QGIS. So attribute joins, you're going to be taking shape files often or some other spatial file and you're combining that with um, some tabular data often. Uh, some data that you can't map for some reason. Um, so I have open here in QGIS. I have census tracts for New York City and they don't have a lot of information about them. They just have a couple of ID numbers, uh, the state ID, and so on. Um, it's the area with land, area with water. Maybe maybe useful, maybe not. Um, in our case though we want to map some census data. So we want um, we want to add columns to this attribute table. And the way we'll do that is we'll we'll start with this shapefile open and we will bring in a spreadsheet of data and then we will join them together. So we will add more columns to this attribute table. And in my spreadsheet program I have open here uh, this is census data for the whole state of New York even though we're only looking at New York City um, I have the whole state that is fine for QGIS it's only going to join things that match and it's going to ignore things that don't match that's fine um, so I have a couple of things here um, one big thing to note is that QGIS is going to expect the first row of the incoming data to be the the names you want for the columns for the attribute table. So I have per renter, which is percentage renter, percentage of households that are renter occupied. And then uh, the way I downloaded the census data, it came with the second row. Um, which are annotations, which are really useful. They helped me see that this is the estimated total of renter-occupied households. But um, if I load this data in QGIS as it is, there's going to be a row with ID and ID2 and geography. And really we want it to go straight to the actual census data. So for um, simplicity, I'm just going to delete any rows that I don't want, I'll leave the rest in there. I will save it. And um, in this case, it is saved as an Excel file, which is fine. I'm going to bring it in by dragging and dropping it into my Layers panel. And if you open the attribute table, it should look um, it should look more or less the way you expect it to. Unfortunately, it seems there's an error in my file here. Um, and I didn't expect that. So you may or may not have that kind of issue. Let's see if that's a common thing. There are a few. OK. So the reason that's potentially an issue is um, you want to make sure in this attribute table that your data is being read the way you expect it to be read. What do I mean by that? The biggest thing is I want to make sure text is being read as text, numbers are being read as numbers. So in this case you can see everything that's left aligned is text. So the census tract descriptions, um, this first ID is being read as text. Any columns with all numbers, QGIS is reading as numbers, and it's right aligned. So you can see that's the case for most of the census data, except for this one column that I made. Um, and I'm just going to ignore that for now. I'm going to work around that. It'll work out fine. Um, but that is an issue you want to keep an eye out for. If some of your data is being read in as text, but you really want it to be numbers, 
you might need to filter out some of the data on the um, in your spreadsheet program or you might need to deal with it in QGIS. Either way, um, you're probably going to have to do something. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to open up both the spreadsheet here and the attribute table for the shapefile. I'll just put them side by side here. What I want to do is find two columns that look like I can join them. And by look like I can join them, I mean it looks like they're of a similar format and that they are unique IDs. So sometimes that's a name, but oftentimes because there are a lot of different ways of formatting a name or capitalizing a name, I really want an ID number, something that's going to be consistent um, both in the shapefile I downloaded and the spreadsheet I downloaded. For the census data, either this geo.id2 or geo.id, either of those should match up fine with these two columns here. And in general, you'll see that the geo.id in the shapefile, it's formatted as text, but this one's formatted as numbers. QGIS is going to be fine with that when we're joining. So we really just want to find two uh, columns, one in the shapefile, one in the spreadsheet, that are going to be good for joining. And I think that these are the two that I want to do right now. Okay, so now to create the join, I'm going to open up the properties for this layer, uh, the spreadsheet layer, specifically the spreadsheet layer. I'm going to go to joins going to add a new join. I'll select the spreadsheet I'm joining with. You could be doing this with multiple spreadsheets at once, so you might need to change the name of the spreadsheet to make it more legible to you. The join field is the field from the spreadsheet that you want. In my case it's geo.id2. You might want to like, you might want to write this down or keep track of it in some notes so that you, um, when you get to this dialogue, you know what to do. Um, it was GeoID in the shapefile. Those are the two columns that I selected. And um, I'm going to create a custom name, uh, field name prefix. So every column in the joined columns will get a new column name. And you see that the default is to put the full name of the spreadsheet first, which is way too much. And I'm actually just going to get rid of it. I don't want a custom prefix. I just want to bring in the column names exactly as they were from the spreadsheet. And I'll hit OK. And I'll hit OK again. Nothing changed on the map itself. But if we open up the attribute table, for the census tracts. You should see, remember it just went to A land before? Now if we scroll, or A water rather, if we scroll to the right, you'll see our IDs came over and also the census data came over. All right, which is great. This is, um, this is what I expected if Uh, it's always a good idea to look at the data and confirm that it is roughly what you expected. And in this case, as I scroll through it, you'll see that yes, it's the display labels are Kings County, Queens County. That's what I expect because they're, that's where I have data for. If you look down at the bottom, there are 2,194 features. If I looked at the original spreadsheet, there should be way more rows because it's for the whole state of New York, right? Uh, about twice as many. That's fine. Remember, we, 
didn't want the data for the rest of the state, so that's fine. Um, and now I can look over here. I want to actually keep that spreadsheet open for, um, or not that one, but the one with annotations. So I'm going to open the one with annotations. That's going to help me decode what these column names mean. So I have owner occupied, uh, total households, renter occupied. Okay, so now that I have this data here, um, I can do a choropleth map, right? So I could, let's, we'll do a graduated one. Um, I think it was HDO1, VDO3, HDO1, VDO3 and I'll classify, and this is the number of renter-occupied um, households, which maybe is not really what we want to look at. It's the number, it's the raw number. We really want to see the percentage that is renter-occupied. And the way we would calculate percentage, um, the quick way to do this is to build an expression I'll clear out whatever's in there and select my fields, HGO1, VDO3. That is the total renter occupied. If I go back to my spreadsheet, the total households is this one, HGO1, VDO1. So I'm going to divide renter occupied by um, total households. Maybe I want to multiply it by 100 so that it's um, 100, it's out of 100% rather than from 0 to 1. And I'll hit OK and classify that. And now we see a much different picture, right? Um, and we see that it's in terms of percentages. So this might be a case where you do want equal interval, so 0 to 20%, 20 to 40%. And it's kind of perhaps what you might expect knowing the geography of New York. Uh, out here in Eastern Queens, more um, owner-occupied households. Down in Staten Island, of course, mostly owner, uh, fewer renters. And then there are some interesting exceptions, perhaps. Um, I don't know enough about this census tract to say much about it, uh, but we could look at it here. Um, so it looks like it's about 16% renters. Okay. I don't know too much about that area, but it definitely seems like an outlier. Similarly, up here on the Upper East Side might be worth digging into a little bit. When you do a join like this, we're calling it an attribute join, two attributes, one from the shapefile, one from the spreadsheet, and uh, just as a reminder, that's under the layer properties, and you can always come back here to the join and modify it. So you can actually come in here and see what the details were. Um, you can edit it. If you select it first, you can edit it. And you can also delete it. If you made a join that you wanted to start over with, um, you can delete it. And another thing to keep in mind is if you save this project, it will save the join. Um, on the shapefile, but it's not actually saving it into the shapefile. It's keeping track of it in the project, not on the shapefile. If you wanted a shapefile with all of these attributes, all of these new ones that we joined in, you need to export it. Export, save features as. Once you do that, you'll have all of the attributes. Um, and then you don't have to worry about losing it because um, you lose the project or something happens to the project. Okay, that is um, how you do attribute joins, specifically with census tracts and census data. I hope it was useful.